Howdy and welcome to episode 11 of the 240SX 2JZ Swap. In this episode, we're going to be putting together the R154 transmission with the shifter extension, and we're also going to be mating it to the engine and installing stuff with the flywheel, the clutch, and whatnot. So, after this episode, essentially, the transmission will be connected to the engine, which for me is a huge step in this whole build. So, let's get rolling on that. So the R154, this is the extended housing that I got from Excessive Manufacturing. It's cast, it's aluminum, it comes with a new uh, shifter bushing. It's really high quality. I would uh, go with them over sending in your old housing to get extended because that one's just uh, much higher quality, I think. And another thing that I should mention about the R154, in the other episode where I actually tore this thing apart, there are some Torx head bolts on the side. There's three here and then there's one uh one on the top here it's hard to see right there and i said you need to take those out because you need to get the ball bearings out um so that they don't fall into the transmission when you're taking off the tail housing and whatnot i was wrong i read through the manual for the r154 and disassembling it and you actually if you're just taking off the tail housing do not need to remove these four uh torque set bolts so i was wrong sorry um yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, that's uh, that's one thing. The only um, thing that you need to take out, there is one Torx head bolt, which I have right here with the ball bearing and the spring and whatnot. It's actually in the tail housing, and if I can find it, uh, it is, it's on the, what side? This is facing like downwards. It's angled uh, like 45 degrees facing downwards. It's right here. Um, and you need to take that out before you remove this or the ball bearing will go everywhere. So that was the random ball bearing that fell out last time that I did not know where that goes. But um, to put this all back together, the one thing you have to make sure that this is, these are your like shift selection um, slots. And there is a rod uh, right here that fits into these slots and before you reassemble the transmission you have to make sure that all these slots line up if one of them is uh down or up not in line with the others that means the transmission is not in neutral and it needs to be in neutral when you put everything back together so make sure that uh is something that you do and also we're going to start reassembling this so i'm going to clean up this uh kind of get the old gasket cleaner, the oil that's on there, and we're going to reseal this, um, this tail housing on and, uh, oh, there's a fly. And that's, that's what we're doing now. Alrighty, so I've went around and cleaned up this um, this mating surface right here. So I'm going to put uh, some fippage around the seal here. You're going to fit your shift linkage into the hole. And then once you have it kind of sticking out the back there, you're going to put in your other shift linkage so that it's slid on there. And there you go. There we go. And now we're just gonna start putting our, our bolts in here. These bolts get torqued down to 27 foot-pounds. So this is sealed up. You can um, bolt in your shift fork here. There's just a little hole in the shaft that this slides onto makes it pretty pretty easy to, to bolt in. All right, so this bolt right here is 29 foot-pounds. That is not the right size. Now what you can do is install the, um, 
that one bearing and spring retainer torx head thing that I was talking about, and it goes into this hole right here. So the ball bearing goes in first, then your spring, and then your bolt, and it gets torqued to 18 foot-pounds. All right, so I've gotten those uh, Torx head bolts torqued down, and at this point, you're gonna install your shift linkage housing, which consists of a little um, oil baffle plate, which fits right on here, just like that. And some of these little retainers that go into these holes, and it just slips right on here. So we are gonna go ahead and install that as well. mocked up here and just for fun I threw on this it's a cube spin-off short shifter so it's not cube speed it's uh, I got it off Amazon it was like 70 bucks instead of the I think it's like two or three hundred dollars for the authentic one had good reviews and I was just playing around with it and it the throws are so short it shifts great goes into every gear uh, pretty darn smoothly I'm very happy with it uh, I can link that to anybody who wants that but we're not gonna keep this on here because we still need to get uh, the transmission in the car. So now that the uh, tail housing is put all back together, I've torqued, um, you know, these down to, I think it was 13 foot pounds. Uh, the transmission is done. It is all put back together. It is extended. I'm very happy uh, with how it shifts. And that is that. So the first step to installing the transmission is to install the pilot bearing. Now this pilot bearing is going to go into the crankshaft um, right here, and we're just going to hit it in with a hammer. But before we do that, I'm going to lube it up just a little bit on the inside here so it slides in a little bit easier. And instead of just going ahead and pounding uh, this in with a hammer, I'm actually taking a socket that fits right on the outer ring of the, the bearing, just like that. It hits against the, uh, the metal part of the bearing, and we're going to hit that into the hole with a rubber mallet um, and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna fit this over this and just do some light. A little bit more, a little bit more persuasion. And there you go. So the bearing should be, do you have this kind of outer edge right here and it should be kind of flush with the with the inner edge um, I know it's kind of hard to explain but if you do this you'll, you'll kind of know that it's in place you can also feel it when it's hitting against uh, the inside of the inside edge so it's in far enough but you just check to make sure it spins freely this one is good I messed up actually uh, with the bearing trying to put it in the first time because I used a socket that wasn't big enough to fit on the outer edge it was a socket kind of a lot smaller that just fit on the uh, the inner edge and it actually indented the uh, the inner part of the bearing and it kind of just it didn't work so I had to take it out and do it again with this bearing but it looks like we're good and at this point we're gonna install the flywheel so this right here is our drift motion flywheel for the R154 to 2JZ so we're gonna install this with I got some brand new ARP uh, bolts for it as well some flywheel bolts and you can see here we have some red Loctite. So we're going to make two passes for the bolts going in a star pattern. There are eight of them that uh, go to the crankshaft there. And the final foot pounds that we're going to be torquing this down to is 75. And I'm also going to wipe this down with some brake cleaner just to clean up the surface a little bit before we install it. All right, so that is the flywheel installed in the front here, just to make sure that it didn't move. Just a extension bar along with a socket and a wrench on the crank pulley bolt. And at this point, it is time to install our clutch and our pressure plate onto there. All right, so to install this hub right here, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna install all of our um, rings and C-rings and clamps and stuff like that. So the first thing you're going to do is take this dish style uh, washer and you're going to fit it in this orientation 
onto the hub. Then you're gonna put your nylon washer on top of that one, just like that. And then you're going to install your throw out bearing in this orientation right on to the hub. And then the C-clip is gonna go right on top here. All right, so I finally got the C-clip on. It is a hassle, but uh, with some persuasion, it, it will go on there. Now what you need to do is take some high temperature bearing grease, and all you need to really do is apply it to the bearing here. All right, so now that that's done, we need to install the clutch release hub into the pressure plate here. So what we are going to do is we are going to hang a tape there. So this is sitting up because what we need to do now is install our big nylon washer like that. Our little wavy guy there and then our big big seat clamp here. So getting that snap ring on was easily one of the hardest things of this build so far. It took me about 45 minutes and that's an extremely long time I know but it, that, oh, that snap ring was really really hard to get on there. I had to use, um, I used a, a tennis, tennis ball container and I fit it over the hub and I pressed down on the snap ring because what would happen was when I used the snap ring tool uh, to expand the the snap ring it would it would like flex and it would twist itself and it it just it, it's so big and it's so thin that when you when you try to expand it and and make it wider um it just it twist and, and flexed on you so i pressed it down with the tennis ball container um and opened it at the same time with the snap ring expander tool uh, so that it stayed kind of flat while I was making it wider and finally it, it, it snapped on there So that is how I did it Thought that was extremely difficult, but now we can install this Onto the engine. Let's do it All right, so reinstallation was the same as when I did it last time except this time with the clutch release hub Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot that but it is reinstalled. So at this point we can finally install the transmission and then we should be good to install it in the car. So the transmission is on. Yes, it took a very long time and the way that I ended up doing it was uh, my brother and I, we kind of got this centered on the on the engine if that kind of makes sense. So we kind of pushed it as, as far up towards the engine as we could and it kind of stopped in place. Like we couldn't push it any further. So after that we threaded in um, these larger 17 millimeter bolts all around the bell housing here and we just got them uh, threaded up to the engine and after they were threaded up uh, a little bit I kind of just went around in a star pattern and just tightened them little by little and it brought the transmission and mated it with the engine after they were all tightened up so it took about 40 minutes I would say to get them all torqued down to spec um, the 17 millimeter bolts that go around the bell housing get torqued to 43 foot pounds and the two 14 millimeter ones or bolts that are on the bottom get torqued to 29 foot pounds and at this point I have the access panel it's kind of hard to see but the access panel is uh, off to the side here and through here, I will get a light in there, but we're gonna install the clutch fork at this time. So I'm gonna go and do that. So this is our clutch fork right here. And before we go ahead and install it, we need to take some grease, grease up this pivot pin right here because it pivots uh, on, this, on this pin. And also these little extrusions on the clutch fork, these little faces right here, these go towards the engine. So essentially when we install it, it's gonna go in this way, but it's on the other side, so it'll go in like 
that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease this thing up and we'll go ahead and, and install it. So it is difficult to see, but this is the access panel on the driver's side of the transmission. So this is uh, our slave cylinder right there. And if you look into the transmission, you will see that little hooked kind of deal right there, that's what that little pivot pin on the clutch fork slides into, and it should just snap into place after you push the clutch fork in. It should take about two seconds. Uh, I'm not working with a lot of room at the moment, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I did install it, it did take two seconds. I just remember though that the slave cylinder needs to be taken out before you install the clutch fork. So the slave cylinder gets installed after the clutch fork does, because as you see that, part of the slave cylinder presses up against the clutch fork right there and so I need to back it out so I can recenter it on the clutch fork but it's very difficult to see but it is it is installed in there so that is the last part we'll put the access panel back on and the engine is ready to be put in the car at this point all right so I think we're going to end the episode here we have come such a long way with this build so far at least it looks pretty who knows if it'll ever start but anyway, next episode, we're going to put this beast into the engine bay, and I'm very, very excited. But anyways, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and I will see you next when we put the engine and transmission in the car. Have a good one.